Hey, good day, folks. It's uh, Lance Klessig, and I'm here today with Jason Cavadini. We're just outside of Marshfield on your farm that you call Cavern Point Farms. Yep. And uh, we're just wrapping up a pasture walk, looking at the benefits of bale grazing and part of the reasons of why. But can you tell us a little bit about kind of the specifics? How many acres you run here? How many cows? That type of thing. Okay, so we've got uh, 60 acres of pasture here. Um, we've been farming here for going on five years now. Um, we transitioned this farm from roll crops to perennial pasture. We just decided that uh, to rotationally graze our beef cattle on perennial pasture was really the only way that we could turn a profit on this land. Sure. So furthermore, that's kind of what led us to bale grazing. There's really, uh, without outwintering our animals out on pasture and, and having the, the bales preset and moving them around, mm -hmm. we really won't be able to raise beef here it would just be really hard we can't bring them in the facility sure. um, they're not set up for that it's more labor than what we can deal with and it's not really the best for our animals either so the, the bale grazing is it's good for us management wise it's good for the animals but it's also our way of uh, building our soil and improving our land sure sure Tell us a little bit about some of the, because this is like, you've been doing this a couple years now with the bale grazing? This is our fourth year. Fourth year. So tell us a little bit about the benefits that you see with the bale grazing, not only right now, but coming into spring and summer and the growing season. Okay. Well, I mean, the biggest benefit is we, we have one or two days of a lot of work setting all of our hay out, and that's just two of us. My father-in-law helps me. Sure. This year, it's been a little more difficult because winter came early. Yep. Um, but we get all of our work done and then we don't really have to start the tractor up again to move hay until spring. Yep. That's probably one of the top benefits for us. Yeah. Um, but not, we starting, also, not starting a cold tractor because you do that all right. in November probably? Right. Okay. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, we're not done with it yet this year because sure. of the, the way thing the weather played out. But, sure. um, but then beyond that we, we want the hay out here and we want them and, and you and I kind of kidded each other about this term before but we want them to be wasteful with the hay wasting we, yes. we want them to spread it around we don't make them clean it up we we um we move them and let them spread it around and, and that hay um is helping to build our soil and right. uh and it's also a, a big part of the hay is we're bringing in seed as well Beautiful. and adding seed to our pasture yeah. Um, so those are kind of the, the bigger benefits and the biggest reasons why we're bale grazing. Awesome, awesome. And you're doing it to be profitable. Right. Let's not forget that. Tell us just quickly your, your rough spacing on your bales. I know you said in the pasture walk you were running like, you know, six in a line. Now you're up to like 12. So about how far apart are your bales here? Our bales are in a 25 foot grid. Yep. Uh, last year, like you said, they were a lot further apart. And we noticed by looking at aerial photos that you can see where every bale was because it's nice and green there's plenty of nutrients there but then there's a big gap in between them sure and we want to minimize those gaps i mean it's that we basically looked at it like if you took a, a fertilizer spreader out in the field and you didn't and you only did strips that didn't touch each other you would see green strips through the field and that's what we were seeing where the bales were and so sure. we want we want it to be a uniform spread awesome Awesome. And you're really wanting to focus in on stimulating the biology. You know, you got the nutrients there, but we're really feeding the biology. Is that one of the main goals that you're... And, yeah. And then the other part of it is, is this, this is, you know, this is another term that's not a very good term, but this is uh, part of the pasture that we're sacrificing for a little while. We're not sure. going to be able to graze this right away in the spring. Mm -hmm. So by keeping the bales tighter, we're minimizing the amount of pasture that we won't be able to graze first thing in the spring. Sure. And even with that being said, you know, Jason and his family could be out here with pigs kind of just distributing the straw and the manure or chickens, and we could do a lot of different things with it as well. Right. So, folks, I just want to say thanks for joining us again. It's uh, Lance Klessig, Jason Cavadini, Cavern Point Farms. We're outside of uh, Marshfield, Wisconsin. And uh, thanks for joining us, everyone.